everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my review of Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. Starting out with the summary of the book, this follows a second chance romance trope where we follow two timelines. In the present day, we have our main character, Macy, who is living an average life. She has a fiance, um, she has a good group of friends, she's a resident working in pediatrics, um, and she's overall happy-ish, but there's been this boy in the back of her mind who was her first love, her first everything, who broke her heart 11 years ago. And she's never quite gotten over that. So when she sees him unexpectedly in a coffee shop, um, they do end up reconnecting and she questions everything about her current life. Going to the past timeline that we follow, we follow two characters, Macy and her best friend Elliot and their love story and how they fall in love, um, starting off as best friends and neighbors and turning slowly into something else up until something happens that completely breaks them apart. Starting out with the plot itself, for me, second chance romances are uh, tough because I haven't read one that I've loved yet. And the reason being, I, I at times feel that the conflict and the tension is very, very forced and kind of over exaggerated, if that makes sense. So throughout a lot of this book, a lot of the conflict that was going on, um, especially in present day, just felt so forced and it was so like obvious what was supposed to happen and what was going to happen that it just made everything that kind of was like the battle getting there seem contrived and silly. Um, so for me, I, I thought the plot definitely dragged and lacked in stakes because I knew what was going to happen. Like, anyone can guess what's gonna happen and it just felt like the path getting there was so silly and exaggerated and was just there for dramatic purposes. In terms of characters, Macy as a character was very middle of the road. She didn't do anything that really made her stand out in my mind as the spectacular character. And she didn't do anything that bothered me. It was just very much this like average protagonist who goes through the motions and ends up where we expect. And I'll say that because the plot at times felt so contrived, and Macy was at the center of that plot, her character at times was also very frustrating because you knew what the right choice was for her. She knew what the right choice was. We all knew. And it was like, why can't we just get there? So maybe it's just the second chance romance trope that I'm not a huge fan of um, because this book just didn't do it for me. The character of Elliot, on the other hand, was a very tough one to decipher because I didn't, I didn't like him. I, I will say that I, I definitely didn't like him. And at times I think I verged on disliking him. And the reason being a lot of times he was so snarky and rude and condescending. Um, and I, I didn't really like that and how he kind of like made a joke, but it came off so condescending to those around him that it like wasn't funny. It wasn't cute. It wasn't like flirty. It was just like snarky. It's like, really? Did you just say that? So there were times where Elliot as a character, I I didn't like him. And I wouldn't say like throughout the whole book, I was rooting against him. Um, like I was still like rooting for him, but there were definitely moments where 
was like, I don't know if I like this guy very much. Um, so for, for like the actual chemistry of the romance, it, it just wasn't really there because I didn't super care about either Macy or Elliot. So, uh, I, it's like romance has to hit on a couple things for me to love it. I have to feel chemistry between the two characters. If I don't feel like that chemistry and that burn and like, I'm not like on the edge of my seat, like rooting for them, like, yes, then it's like not doing its job for me because that's what romance is. It's supposed to be like this like desire and this chemistry and you're just supposed to like be rooting for this couple to succeed and like, <laughs> I don't know, it just like, oh, it bothered me. And so that was kind of a miss. And then I, I have to love like one of the characters at least, like, like I'm, I'm trying to like not compare this to other uh, romances, but it's hard not to. Like Christina Lauren's other book, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, does this spectacular, spectacularly because you love Hazel. Like I loved Hazel. She stuck out in my mind. She was quirky. She was very eccentric. She was like so, so independent and like, I am not changing for anyone. And you like felt her take a stand for herself. And you didn't get that from this protagonist and this love interest. And Josh and Hazel did such a great job building up that chemistry and like the, uh, it was just the buildup and the dialogue between the two characters was so witty and so great. And you just lacked all of that in this. So like, I know Christina Lauren can do it. I know that they can write a romance that I absolutely love. This just wasn't it. And so this was definitely my least favorite Christina Lauren. I am still going to make my way through all of their books because I'm very interested to see what else they have because I loved Josh and Hazel, if you didn't get that already. Loved Josh and Hazel and I loved the Unhoneymooners. I thought that was excellent. Um, and both of those were different tropes. You know, we, we've got Josh and Hazel, which was definitely the friends to lovers trope. And then you've got the Unhoneymooners, which is the enemies to lovers trope. So maybe it's just a second chance romance trope I don't love because I haven't found one that I've really connected to. So I'd be curious to hear your thoughts down below. Um, I am going to sort of move into a couple of spoilers now. So if you are interested in reading this book, and again, if you love second chance romances and find that that's something that you absolutely love and you love other Christina Lauren, if you love other Christina Lauren, then I do recommend this book um, because it's, it's it's not bad. Like it got a three out of five stars for me and I I enjoyed it. Like it was good enough to read in one sitting. I read this in one sitting on a plane. So, I mean, that alone tells you that I, I did enjoy it. I just, it, it was not something that stuck out in my mind and not something I'd probably come back to and reread. Um, so, that's my overall without spoiler review. Um, so now moving into spoilers. So this is the official warning. Move away if you do not want spoilers. And if you're interested in reading this book, if you've already read it or you're not interested, then you can stick around. So when I talked about the plot being super contrived, I'm really referring to Macy staying with her fiance, who she so clearly didn't love and didn't fit in with. And like that for me dragged on for way too long. I felt we just spent way too much time with her going back and forth like, oh, should I stay with my fiance who I've known for two months but know nothing about, but I don't love and has a daughter that doesn't need me and I feel like I don't belong in this family and it doesn't make any sense why I'm with them but I'm still gonna make some conflict of it so that we have some drama in this story. That for me was so obnoxious that whole inner monologue with the fiance and just dragging that out for as long as we did because it's so clearly 
not right for her. Even without Elliot in the picture, it wouldn't have been good matches at all in terms of those two getting together. Like it, uh, that just, that bothered me to no end how long we spent on that and how contrived that felt. It truly felt like that was just in the book to just kind of add some pages. So I really didn't like that. And then in terms of like the, the ending twist, where we find out, you know, that it was, she was so mad, not because Elliot cheated, but because she associated the car accident with her father and her father dying with what happened with Elliot. I, I, don't, I still don't know how I felt about that because it took such a dark turn. And I really like my romances being more, this sounds so bad, but more fluffy. I mean, that sounds so bad because it's like, I, I'm not hating on romances that contain this very like serious content and have these messages, but it didn't feel like that was really like communicating a message to the audience and wasn't really like serving any purpose besides adding this like twist and this new element to the story. So I still don't know how I feel about the ending. What do you think? If you've read this book, what did you think of the ending? Because I'm really, I'm having a hard time deciding whether or not it was unnecessary or if it was necessary. And the problem with it is like, if the theme that it was going for was kind of grief and how to handle grief, well, we didn't even know that that was what Macy's struggle was until the ending because they kind of kept it a secret so that it could be this big twist. So the book doesn't even really comment on like the grief and the aftermath of that because we don't find it out until the very, very last like 20 pages. So again, I, I don't know what purpose that twist served besides adding drama. And, uh, you know, I just don't really like that. Anyways, I'm not gonna ramble on anymore. That's my full review of Love and Other Words. Overall, three out of five stars. I didn't love the plot. I found it at times very contrived. I didn't love the characters um, and the chemistry between the two, but I did enjoy overall the story I thought you know it, it had enough in it that warranted three stars for me and it was fast-paced enough where I really wanted to know what that like twist was and what broke them apart so it had that element of like intrigue and mystery enough to like keep me turning the pages because I was like I really want to know like what broke these two up that would they were so in love like what could possibly have gone wrong um, that kept them apart for 11 years. And so that that enough kind of kept me very, very invested in the story. And I think that that was a very well accomplished feat, um, which is why it got that three out of five stars from me. So what are your thoughts? Leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy reading. And until next time, bye. <laughs>